You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast with Melissa Klug and Jen Obermeyer. Thank you so much for joining in. Our mission is to broaden the horizons of savvy business women in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. You'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. So now, let's get started. Hey, Pro Organizers, it's your podcast co-host, Melissa. I hope that you are cruising through the first part of January. I've continued keeping to my word of the year, which is focus. I have been continuing to eliminate a bunch of the distractions I have. And honestly, I'm feeling so much better about just my organization and my work life and all that stuff. I hope you guys are feeling the same about your words. I got a ton of lovely DMs and emails and messages about what words people have chosen for themselves for this year. Here are a few of the other ideas that came from our inspired organizer group. Someone said their word of the year is me, which I completely love. We got a limitless thoughts, build habits, ease. There were so many good words that came out of it. And I loved that people put a lot of thought into it and that it was super personal for them. So hopefully you picked your word of the year and are starting off well. A year ago, almost to the day, we put up an episode from someone who was a brand new organizer. Her business had just started. She had just started reaching out to clients. It was episode 97, in case you want to go back and look at it. It was called Taking the Leap, Wisdom from a Business Launch. What I wanted to do is have Kim back on and talk to us about what she learned in her first year of organizing and her first year of being an entrepreneur. If you go back and listen to her episode before you listen to this, you will be able to hear all of the things she realized that she didn't know, all the things she thought she knew but might do differently. It's just great to talk to her and really get her impressions of her first year of organizing. We talked about so many things that I wanted to break it up into two parts so that we don't overwhelm people because there's so much good stuff in it. You're going to have part one this week, part two next week. And one of the things I love about Kim is she absolutely genuinely loves hearing from people. So if you listen to this and you get inspired by it, please reach out to her. I know she would love to hear from you. All right, let's get started with my friend and my client and wonderful organizer, Kim Snodgrass of Rustic Home Organizing. How are you? I am very well today. The sun is shining and I'm happy to be here. Here's why I'm excited to talk to you today. It was one year ago, almost exactly a year ago that we had you on the podcast and you were at that time a baby organizer. You had just started your business and the other day I was like, oh, I know because I talk to you a lot how far you have come in that year, but I want everybody to hear how far you have come in this year. And I want you to talk about all the things you've learned. And so I'm just, I'm thrilled that you agreed to be here with us today and do your year wrap up. Absolutely. I'm excited to. This is very cool to be able to share everything that has gone on in the last year. Yeah. All right. Let's just start out. Let's give everyone a recap. When did you start your business? Where are you? All that good stuff. Technically started in November of 21, but I launched in January of 22. So my business is technically established in 22. I went full board, jumped with both feet in and just started plugging away listening to lots of podcasts, coaching, doing all the things to get myself foundation to be able to start my very own organizing business. Been organizing, obviously, my entire life, as most organizers have, with the exception of you. That's right. <laughs> I started late. You started a little late. But so it just became more of my journey to becoming a business owner, not as much the organizing piece of it. So what would you give yourself on a scale of one to 10 when you first started out? So a year ago at this time, what would you rate yourself in terms of like confidence, business knowledge, all of that kind of stuff? Oh boy. Confidence. I would say on a scale of one to 10, my confidence was about at two. Okay. On a good day. <laughs> and then I think today I'm, I'm, I'm on the upper end. And depending on how much sleep I get the night before, I'm anywhere between an eight and a 10. Okay. Um, sleep is important, also, by the way. Sleep is very critical. important. But what people don't understand is, unfortunately, projects live in your brain in your sleep. And so 
the Tetris game goes on while you're sleeping, and that can sometimes interfere <laughs> with the REM sleep. It but um, definitely confidence has played a huge part in my success. This All right, last so let's year. let's talk about that because yes. you and I have been working together for a while, yeah. and it was. It, at the beginning, because we all, by the way, this is not just you, it's all of us. All of us struggle with confidence on sometimes a daily basis, sometimes an hourly basis, if I'm being honest. Like, what were some of the things that got you from a two to an eight slash 10? I started to write down some notes today about things that would be important for me to share. And the very first thing I wrote down was being okay with mistakes. Yeah. And those mistakes can range from the back end of your business to being in the home and realizing when you left, oh, that was a really bad idea of what I just implemented. I really need to fix that. But being okay with those mistakes so you don't beat yourself up over it. And the biggest thing you take away from those mistakes is learning. You have learned what you're going to move forward in in your next job. I think that is going to be what I have learned the most this year is being okay with my mistakes and being excited when I make them because they're getting me to a much better place. I um, I would love for this needs to be like, I don't know, a t-shirt, a billboard, <laughs> a like what I, I don't know, because I think that a lot of organizers struggle with perfectionism. And by the way, that's a great trait for an organizer, right? We want people mm -hmm. to, you know, give people beautiful homes, but that can also sometimes manifest as like, oh, I made a mistake. I'm going to beat myself up about it for the next 16 weeks and being able to say, you know what? I did that. I learned from it and I'm going to not do it in the future. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, be okay with your mistakes. I made some mistakes right off the bat. I invested a lot of money, which you don't have to, to start an organizing business. Correct. We've all talked about that, but it was important to me to do that. And I, I went a little overboard and that's okay. I'm okay with going overboard because it's helping me in this next year, but I do want to rewind just a little bit. So at the beginning of 2022, I came up with a couple words. They were going to be my words for the year. And one of them was outsourcing. And I did that. And I'm so happy I did that. But it also made me realize it's important to outsource when you're ready for that outsourcing. And as a, uh, an organizer new in the business, I outsource so many things right away. But what I didn't realize is for myself, I wasn't ready for all of that. I didn't have the bandwidth. You know, technology is not my strong suit. So I thought, okay, I have to outsource all of it. Everybody will do it for me. But you still need to understand when you outsource, you still have to understand it. You might be able to pay somebody to do it and get it all set up for you. But unless you're paying somebody to work for you on a daily basis, which some organizers have, you have to still learn how to maneuver within those programs or apps or whatever you invest your money in on. And so that I, I definitely took that away from my first year. The best advice I can give to new organizers getting into business is to focus on your SEO and Google. Yep. And those are number one and number two. And they go together. Hands so those down. things, yes. those things are interlinked. Yes. So Whether we like it or not, Google runs us. We depend on Google and you have to figure out how to maneuver mm -hmm. within Google and manipulate Google to do, to have it work for you. And I, I want to go back because you've said a lot of important things and, and this goes along with the SEO and the Google piece, but I want to go to what you said about you still have to understand the things that you're, you are using, right? Even if you are not a super techie person, even if that's a struggle for you, you still have to have an entrepreneurial understanding of the key things in your business. So I know for you, I, because I know you, I know one of the things you're talking about is you went with Dubsado as a CRM and you had someone set that up for you, but you still struggled with implementing it because it is, it's pretty complex. Mm -hmm. And what you said that I want to really touch on is do the investment in the right thing at the right time. You may not mm -hmm. have needed that to start out with. Is that fair? Absolutely correct. We all need Google. One of the things I find in our Inspired Organized group, a lot of questions from the newer organizers that join is, where do you go get your clients? Where do you find your clients? 
Well, you want your clients to find you. Yes, you do need to get yourself out there, but you also want your clients to find you as much as you want to be able to find your clients. And the only way to do that is through Google. Yes. You just, so you need to do it in your website, your SEO. Tell us a little bit about what you learned about those things this year and what you have done <laughs> yeah. that has made yeah, you successful. absolutely. So as far as to back up a little bit on the CRM, and I don't want to throw Dubsado under the bus. It's not Dubsado. It's, it's not Dubsado's fault. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> yeah. And the person that set it up for me did nothing wrong. I thought I needed it and I didn't need it. One thing I have learned in the last three months. So my business was a little slow the first six months, and then it like grew by a thousand percent in the last half of this year. And so what I realized is I would have been ready for a CRM this next year. I didn't need it this last year. That CRM caused me a lot of stress and a lot of frustration and a lot of money. And I didn't have enough business at the beginning to really be able to utilize it to the full potential. And I also so, think it hurt your confidence too. I think going oh, back absolutely. to the confidence thing, I think it made you mm -hmm. believe that like, oh, I, I, I'm not, I can't do this. Like it was a confidence mm -hmm. dropper. It, it really was. And to know that I am great at texting, calling, emailing, I, I'm good at all of that. And I should have leaned on that versus expecting a system that would do it all for me. I didn't need an CRM to be able to reach out to my clients for me. I wanted to. I wanted to initiate it. I wanted to, whatever my mood was that day or how I was feeling, if I was in a, in a really great mood, I wanted it to be able to shine through in that email or that text or that phone call. And it just gave me a sense of control. So I don't need the automated systems. I don't want the automated systems moving forward. As of now, that might change for some reason if I grow, but for now, I like it. I like that personal touch. And I think that's very important for new organizers in business to figure out what their strengths are and lean on them. If you're a super techie person and sitting in front of that computer, getting those workflows going gives you that confidence, I say go for it. Yep. If you are the person that wants to go out and talk to people or do a workshop or go to a chamber meeting and talk about your business, go for it. You, you need to do work on your strengths. Yes. And I also think that it's, it's some of that timing is the amount of business you have and what your business looks like. And so it might be your first year, you actually don't need that because you actually need to develop the, you know, develop that muscle strength of like, hey, I know what it's like to respond to a client and I can mm -hmm. do all of that. Or it may be, I have enough business now that I'm starting to miss some things and man, I could really use some automated systems to make sure I'm not missing anything. It's, it's all about the season of business that you're in. And that's a really good point. I think when you allow yourself to have some growing pains, you learn more effectively. Yeah. So if I would have started my CRM now, I probably wouldn't have had such a mind block learning curve over it because it would have made more sense to me because I've had so many different situations and back and forth and different set types of clients. I think it's important to allow yourself to grow before you start thinking that you need it all in place day one, Yeah, which is what I thought I needed, but I didn't. And getting some of that learning process too, that can go for a lot of things. Like one example I always think of is I do virtual consults now. I do consultations on FaceTime or Zoom, but I'm really glad that I had two plus years of doing them in person under my belt before I switched to that, because I think that's yes. really important to learn. What does the sales process look like? What is it like to talk to a client? What are the important things I need to ask? All those things. It's it's some of that you kind of earn the right <laughs> to need to Absolutely. use some of the things, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think so. That's a great way to put it. You know, you unless you're in a spaces, other people's spaces, yeah. you're not going to want to, you're not going to know how to on a Zoom call say, hey, can you, you know, can you show me that corner one more time or wait, what's that up there? Right. You know, yeah, you need to be able to give yourself knowledge before you start diversifying what you're going to use to control that knowledge. I want to go back to it. <laughs> you touched on it, but I really want to talk about um, SEO and Google. How did you learn about those things this year and how did it impact your business? Yes, definitely. First of all, in the Inspired Organizer Group is where I 
was connected to Brie and she does website design, but then she also had a team that did other aspects to setting up that website. And that was where I was introduced. I didn't even know what SEO was, by the way. And that's where I was introduced to that. I've had a few people reach out to me this last year wanting to know how to start an organizing business. And that is a huge question. And I always, that's always my response. That's a really big question. Yes. <laughs> my best advice is to start picking up the breadcrumbs, follow the breadcrumbs and pick them up. And so that's basically what I have done in this whole Google SEO trail is I just keep taking one piece at a time and moving forward. And so the gal who set up my SEO, she also has an Instagram account that she throws out SEO tips, Mm -hmm. free SEO tips all the time. So I follow that. I read her newsletters. I listen to other people. It's big. Like SEO to me is very complex. It's very big. And I don't understand all of it. I just know it's very, very important. But you don't have to understand all of it as an organizer. No, I don't have to understand all of it. And I think if I had the patience, I probably could have sat in front of my computer and figured out how to get that that integration going. And I probably could have had some help within our inspired organizer group. Everybody's always so willing to help each other, but I didn't, I don't have patience. So I just, I did, I paid to have it done and I'm glad I did. Now that's not to say I just do it one time and that's it. Right. It evolves and I have to, my, my website will become stagnant if I don't continually tweak it, add, take away, change pictures. And you just learn all of that along the road. But I, I will say all of this knowledge, most of my breadcrumbs come from our inspired organizer group. They just There's do. so much knowledge there. People have so many things that they're able to throw There's out. That so I, like, many. Oh, gosh, I didn't know about that. That's amazing. Yeah. It, it allows you to go, oh, wait, I wasn't aware of that. I better go and do a little investigation on that. Again, more breadcrumbs, follow them and it will lead you in good places, really, as far as, you know, the SEO piece yeah. has been for me. And I will say too about SEO, when I said you don't have to know everything about SEO as an organizer, because the thing that I love about organizing is you can know that like the teensiest tip of the iceberg about SEO and it will help your website just a little, little bit. Like we are not running Facebook here. We are not, you know, running a digital platform that is so complex that we have to pay someone a ton of, there are a few SEO things for organizers. There have been, we've done prior podcast episodes on it. Definitely go back and listen to those, but it is so critical to have that digital foundation of your business. And by the way, digital foundation does not include social media. It includes Mm -hmm. your website, SEO, Google business profile, That's your digital foundation. And that is where the bulk of your business is going to come in. You are so right. We're trying to hit local. Yes. I mean, as an in-home organizer, I I should say for myself, I'm trying to hit local. So your SEO is a little tighter and not quite as complex. So it's definitely doable. Has there been anything that has surprised you about your own ability to handle things or how you've been able to handle your business this year? You know, that is a really great question. And that that's a question I should really reflect on for 2023. I've had a few moments. I've had a few panic moments of, I we can't do, do this. Yeah. yeah. You know, Chad, my better half has met me for a beer close by many jobs to talk me off the ledge. And he's come in and saved me on a few jobs too, being my handyman. What I have learned from those situations is I just need to take a breath. I need to take a step back and I need to take it one piece at a time. I had a garage that basically knocked me over. It was so intense and it took me a little bit to wrap my head around it. But I surprised myself when I started to to pick away at it that, oh, I can do this. Yeah. Sometimes in these larger projects, you've got to just look at one corner at a time. Yep. As a solo, I'm a, you know, I'm a solo organizer. I don't have a team. I don't think anybody would want to work with me, but um, <laughs> except my daughter, she's the only one that can handle me. But yeah, that, I think for me, problem solving this last year surprised me. I I was able to problem solve. That's a great one because I never really realized that when I started, your job is essentially like an organizer is just Mm -hmm. a constant problem solver. And the problems can come at you in a lot of different directions. 
And there yes. might be new problems and- every five minutes. <laughs> Kind of. And for for ladies or gentlemen going into their business, I think it's important to know you don't have to run into these places and you're not on a a stopwatch. I I, I like to refer to it as you're not on the price is right. The clock isn't ticking. Take your time. Don't rush. They don't have anything to compare it to. And I did that in some of my beginning jobs. I literally felt like I was in that grocery store yeah. games or whatever it is where you just had to run and grab like certain items and get to the checkout. That's how I felt. And, yeah. and it's really important to take your time, give yourself some momentum buildup because it comes after you've sat in that project for a couple hours, it just starts to go. I find my personality is I always want to have the answer and I want to have the answer like immediately. And one of the things I had to learn for myself is Sometimes you have to stop and take a step back and say, I need to think about this for a minute. I need to Mm -hmm. stop and look at this room and figure out my plan. And I'll say it to clients sometimes like, hey, I just I need a second to think about a couple Mm of things. I'm not I'm not ignoring you. I just I need to think about this and stopping and giving yourself a little bit of that space to figure something out. Nobody expects you to have every single answer at your fingertips perfectly. And that, that was something that I had to get over too. Yeah, definitely. Can I touch on one more thing? Oh, absolutely. I want to throw out my social media take. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. I talked earlier about finding your strengths and using those to give yourself confidence within your business. And if your strength is social media, like it comes naturally to you, you love doing a reel and you can just it gets easy for you, I say go for it. But what I think is important for new organizers and even ones that have been in business for a little bit, this is something I I really have just finally had a light bulb go off. Social media is an extension of networking, only locally though. Unless you have an online offering or you have an online course, that's a whole different ball game. And that's, I I can't speak on that because that's not what I'm doing. But if you are just organizing in home, I think it's important to understand that the bulk of your business is not going to come from Instagram or Facebook. Correct. It's an extension of your SEO on Google (laughs) because what they're going to do is they're going to find you and then they're going to go head over onto your social media. Now your social media might seal the deal. It might confirm what they're already thinking about you. And I've had a couple clients say they picked me because my social media was real. They sh- I showed my family. They could get an idea of who I was. And that's great. But they found me from Google. Right. So I have decided moving forward into 2023, my social media is another extension of networking locally. So my social media following for me is important to be local people so that I can promote other businesses and show support for them. And hopefully in return, they'll think of me in the future. It's very dangerous to get stuck down into a rabbit hole of followers and links and postings and all of this stuff. And I do think you need to have some value to your social media. Um, Definitely some value, but just be really careful not to put too much time into it. Put your time into your SEO integration into your website. And then have the social media be just a byproduct of of you. I think that so many, especially newer organizers, they just think they have to do it. And they think they have to have tons of followers. And by the way, Instagram is a freaking hamster wheel. So the faster you go on that wheel, it's going to keep speeding up. And then they're going to go, oh, oh, you learned how to do reels. Cool. Now you have to learn how to do this other thing over here. Oh, you learned how to do that other thing over here. Oh, we actually are going to, now we're, we're reprioritizing still pictures. You are constantly going to be chasing something. And the other thing that I look at on my own social media, because I, I enjoy doing social media, but I do it. You can check any of my feeds. I do it haphazardly. There's no strategy whatsoever to it. What I find too is, and by the way, I love, love connecting with other organizers. Most of the people that like and comment on my posts are other organizers. 
Mm -hmm. And I love that because I love community and I love working with organizers and meeting other organizers, but those people are not hiring me for organizing jobs. <laughs> They're not wow. coming to home by 11 because they really want me to organize their house. And so that I just want to make sure that you're careful about, you know, it's a little bit of an echo chamber. And then I think this will lead us to something else too, which is comparing yourself against what other organizers are doing. Because if another organizer is doing seven reels a day, then you go, oh crud, maybe I need to be doing seven reels a day. And you start on a different hamster wheel. Yes, absolutely. And speaking of community, there really is a great community out there of organizers. Absolutely. Absolutely not just in our inspired organizer. And last year when I did the podcast, one of the things I said was reach out to people, tell them if they've inspired you. Yes. I shy against asking organizers how to start your business, but let them know you inspired me. I listened to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I still believe in that wholeheartedly. I still do it to this day. Other organizers in your area, reach out to them, say hi. It's not as cutthroat as you think. I hurt my leg a week ago and I had two organizers locally ready to jump in Aww. and take care of my clients, That's ready, so just nice. ready to jump in. Yep. I fortunately was able to adjust them enough that I didn't have to utilize that, but they were doing that out of the kindness of their heart. And it is so important to connect to other organizers locally and globally. I, there's quite a few that I, I, go back and forth with on a regular basis. And it's nice. It's really nice. It, one of the things that I personally had a, a hard time adjusting to, and I mean this in the nicest way possible, is like I came from businesses where it was cutthroat. Like you hated your competitors. You didn't talk to them. First of all, it was illegal to talk to them in some cases, but but also like you would see them at a trade show and be like, oh, it's that guy from blah, blah, blah. Like I'm going to give him a dirty look, whatever. Organizers are so nice. I have local organizers that I have helped build their businesses. I have local organizers that, I mean, theoretically, they're my competition, but I send people to them. I'll say, hey, I'm not taking new clients right now, but I would love to send you to these two or three people. Developing that local network of other organizers is a beautiful thing, and we really don't compete. There is enough business out there for all of us. Yes, yes, there absolutely is. I haven't overlapped with anybody, not yeah. even close. Let's talk a little bit about one of my favorite subjects, comparisonitis, because <laughs> I don't think you'll mind me saying, I know no, this was something no. that you struggled with at the beginning was, well, that organizer's doing that and that organizer's doing that. And tell us a little bit about your journey on comparison. Absolutely. Yeah. Very easy to do at the beginning. You see all of these warehouses and their garages are their inventory and you see vans and you see teams and you see mock speed reels of them organizing, thinking you have to be that fast or cool t-shirts, cool hats. I do have cool hats, by the way. Fantastic. I'll be looking forward to mine coming in the mail. I, do. I, do. <laughs> I love my hats, but there's so much that can be wrapped up into that. Yeah. That could be years of experience. It could be simply a show. You just don't, you do not know what that person that has the van and maybe storage in their garage or their own storage facility, maybe they started their business five years ago, but were they doing it on the side prior to that? You don't know what the lead up was to get to that point. And I, for the first time in about 10 months, am at peace with that. And this year, I'm so happy to be where I'm at. My steady growth. I don't have to parade it. I do like to show before and afters. I know quite a few of my local people like that. They enjoy seeing before and afters and mine aren't always glamorous, but those are important to me to show sometimes that, you know, in action during a, an organizing job, that's fun to show, but being okay with where you are, the pace you're going and what you're doing behind the scenes is just the most important part. And if you're following those accounts that tend to get you into a spiral, unfollow them. Just unfollow 100%. them for a period of time. It's nothing personal against them. It's it's a you problem. And and also, if it doesn't bother you, glean off of what they're doing. Take some ideas. Use, use some of the product. Oh, I haven't seen that product before. You know, use it for good, not evil. Don't let it get you down, for sure. Use it to energize yourself. And then if you see something where you're like, oh my gosh, that is an amazing idea. I want to go implement that. Cool. Then you go, 
how do I do that? What does that look like for my business? How can I tweak it for own clients, my own area? But yeah, if you have something, I love that advice. If you have someone that you are just judging yourself against so hard and it's making you feel bad about yourself. By the way, that goes for personal social media too. <laughs> if there is someone in your personal social media that you're like, this is really draining me. This is taking, this is an energy suck for me. Just gratefully say, thank you so much. I just need to take a little bit of a break. Yeah. Just like Marie Kondo. Thank, give it, thank it for giving you the joy. Thank it, it for its service yeah. and send it and on its way. It you, yeah. by the way, for some people, I have advocated. I'm thinking about one person that I love in my life specifically. I advocated get off all social media. Do not look at Instagram. Do not post on Instagram. Do not post on Facebook. Don't do it because it's so detrimental to how you feel about yourself and your business. So you yeah. can take and you can just take a break. It doesn't have to be forever, but you can just take a break. Yeah, it can definitely be toxic. I know an organizer who said she was shutting off all of her social media for this entire year and she has stayed off. And by the way, she's not suffering one bit from it business wise. <laughs> Nothing that says you have to be on it and looking at it all the time. And uh, another, you know, another point on that too, in, in looking at some of these organizers doing really big, amazing things, you have to decide, is that what you want? For me, this year came to a decision that I'm a grandmother for the first time. My last daughter is a sophomore at University of Oregon. All my kids are out. I I want to enjoy some time. Yeah. I don't want to be tied to an, an inventory list. I don't want to be tied to employees. I don't want to be tied to a whole bunch of stuff. And so for me, I'm keeping it very simple and I'm still doing very well. I, you know, I just have super low overhead. So I don't it's about, to. it really like it's simple, but it's complex, right? It's about what do you need to get? So what does your business need to provide for you? Whether that's financial, social, whatever. And then it's about how do you get there? And then it's about what are your stretch goals? You need this, but man, it would make me really happy if I got this. Like example, I have a child going to college next year. So I'm like, hey, where are all those organizing jobs? I need all of them. <laughs> right. But exactly, you know, four years from now, I might be in more in your neck of the woods where I'm like, you know what? I want to slow down a little bit. I, I don't need to, to do that. It's about the season of your life and where does your business fit into there? And you don't have to say, oh, yeah, I would like a team of seven unless you want a team of seven and then go do it. But the comparisonitis goes for a lot of different things. And it's got to be about what you want and what you need. And what your bandwidth is. You know, a team of seven means a lot of back end business stuff that will probably put me into a tailspin. So why would I even want to put myself right. through that? Versus there are people listening to this that are like, oh, my gosh, that sounds that. exciting. And yeah. I want that. Awesome. Love it. Yep. Exactly. Love that journey for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to go back to something you just said, which is really getting out and talking about your business. I've said it a million times before. I will continue to say it. I have never had a job in my entire life that people wanted to talk about more than professional organizing. There is not a person who is not like, wait, tell me more about that. Wait, what do you do? What? Even if it, by the way, there are, I'm just going to say it. There are some men in my life that are like, wait, you get paid for that? Yes, I do actually quite well. I am telling you, if you just tell people, hey, I'm a professional organizer. Oh my gosh, you are going to have, you actually might have to cut off the conversations. So telling people what you do in your personal network, making sure that everybody knows what you do for a living. I'm telling you, that is the best weapon you have in your arsenal. Absolutely. I love going out and talking. And you're right, you do have to cut people off. Yeah. And I will give some advice to new organizers. The first question you're going to get asked is, what's the craziest thing you've ever found? 100%. And I, I will tell you what I have found. But even if you haven't found something, make something up because yeah. it just, they think it's the coolest thing in the right. entire world. The second question you're going to be asked is, so how many hoarders do you work with? Everybody loves the yeah. H word. Yeah. Yeah, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother podcast. Right. I just I tell people, you know what? I think it's it, it, what what you're missing is like, that's a very small part of the population. And I know it's been popularized on television, but it's not really who we work with. I work with just normal people every day that need a little bit of help. But yeah, you start to get that's like scripts that you can say to, to all the questions that you get. Yeah, start working on your scripts. <laughs> yes, exactly. What are you 
happy that you learned in the last year about yourself? I am so happy that I confidently can walk into a home and know that I can solve the problem. Yep. There truly isn't a problem I can't solve. I'm not saying that I can do it all on my own, but there literally hasn't been, and I don't feel like there's going to be a problem, an area that I can't solve. And yeah. I think my biggest challenge this year was doing my camper van, you know, like oh, a yeah. like a, a sprinter van style. That was my biggest challenge. Yeah. That was sometimes quite the, the, smallest, challenge. the smallest spaces are the yeah. biggest problem. So. Yeah. Yeah. That one packed a big punch, but definitely being able to walk in and know that I can help anybody that wants my help. Not saying I want to help everybody. There are some right. clients that I don't want to help. They're not your favorites. For the, no, for the most part, though, everybody is so wonderful that I've worked with. Yeah. I will tell you, there's a line, I think I've talked about it on the podcast before. There's a line from the show Seinfeld, which was one of my favorite shows when it was on, but they're talking about how you can't really ever do a charitable act because you get something from it too. You know, you can't just selflessly do something because you're like, oh, I feel good that I helped someone. And so I feel that way about my work at Pro Organizer Studio. Like I love doing it because I love seeing people grow and change. So I feel like selfish that I get a lot out of seeing people, but I mean this so sincerely from the first time that I met you versus just one year later, you are a, you were a great person to start out with, but you're even greater now. You have grown so much. You have changed so much in terms of your mindset and you have done the work and it's so rewarding to be able to see like what one year can do to someone. So I just, I love it. Well, thank you. That is so sweet. I and mean it so <laughs> sincerely. And I feel it about so many people that we get to work with. But one of the right? reasons I wanted to have you on the podcast is because people heard from you a year ago and just being able to see like what you have learned in the space of one year, 365 days, you could do a ton of stuff in one year. You can, and you can grow so much. And yes, I thank you for that reminder because I am very excited this year to see where I go and and see what I learn. I just yeah. can't believe how much I've learned. Never stop learning. Yeah. You can't learn enough. Just fill her up. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to end it here today with Kim, but next week we will bring you all of the rest of our conversation with her. I adore her honesty and her straightforward way of looking at her business, and I hope that you enjoyed it too. If you want a little bit more goodness from Pro Organizer Studio, please check out poroadmap.com. I give you a free one-hour workshop called the Pro Organizer's Profit Plan. I would absolutely adore to spend another hour with you. This is 24-7, 365. If you wake up in the middle of the night and want to spend some time with me, that's great. If you want to take a lunch break with me, that's great too. Just make sure you order something good for me for lunch. And I look forward to seeing you guys there. Have a wonderful week, organizers. Thank you so much for listening in to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. If you'd like to get our roadmap for success as a pro organizer, head straight to www.poroadmap.com.